guys, it's Holly. If you are new here, welcome. I do a lot of cooking, travel, homeschooling, and motherhood videos. Today, I wanna to share with you an honest review of a place that we visited early this summer, and that is Elidge Gardens, Denver, Colorado. Now, I'll be honest, this was the first time I had ever been to Elidge Gardens here in Denver, so it might have been different back in the day. I don't really know. I'm making this video in summer of 2023. Of course, it could have been a whole lot different back in the day, and maybe now it's even better. Now, I have heard rumors that they will be moving Elidge Gardens, but I also heard those rumors last year. I think it's been an ongoing thing for a couple of years that they will be moving the park in general. This review may not even be relevant, but I just felt like I wanted to share because I didn't know what to expect going in. And I just thought if anyone's making a trip out to Denver, Colorado, and thinks this might be a place they want to visit, I wanted to share what to expect, or at least what I got out of it. Now I did make a video sharing about our whole day at Elidge Gardens. And if you wanna go check out that video, there'll be a link for it in the description box below. Of course, that showed a beautiful side of it because you know we did have a fun time. I don't wanna say this is all like a negative review. This review is gonna go both ways. This is mainly a review of what to expect. The stuff I did not show you in that fun family vlog I did on our day there. We did have a great time. I will go ahead and make that known. It wasn't a horrible experience. Now, first of all, before I get into the review, I will say that I appreciate that Elish Gardens didn't cost a whole lot of money to go and visit. It's not up there with the cost of going to a Disney park, a Universal Studio park. You know, there are so many other amusement parks out there that cost a lot more to go and visit. This was very affordable for us to take our family of six to. With that being said, this will go along with some of the things I found a bit negative when it came to this park. That is my reason number one, I found the park a little dirty. I found that they just don't do a really great job cleaning the place, keeping up with painting, maintenance. I mean, I was at Disneyland a month before our day at Elidge's and Disneyland, Disney parks are always gonna be super clean. And those are the type of theme parks that you're used to going to. I think you will be pretty disappointed visiting Elidge's and just seeing that this place it's just not as pretty as Disney parks, as other theme parks out there. Again, you factor in to the cost of visiting these parks. If they're not gonna charge you as much to get in, they're not gonna put as much into maintaining the park, picking up every piece of trash, painting everything when you know the paint starts chipping away. So that is something to consider. If you want a park that is going to be clean and crisp, then you gotta pay the extra money and go somewhere else. But if you don't care about it being completely perfect and very tidy, then you can get past it and just go and enjoy the rides. Now going to the rides. The rides to me were very interesting in that they had a lot of thrill rides, you know, a lot of roller coasters that flip upside down, you know, spin you around and throw you around. A lot of rides that were fun for maybe my three older kids, but my youngest could not do. And so we had to split up and, you know, my husband or myself would take the older kids to the rides that they could do. And then my youngest, while she had a wonderful time in Kitty Land, the area designed for the younger kids, my older kids could not go on a lot of those rides. There was a height restriction. It's funny because even though my kids are really tall, they would have loved to go on some of those little rides, but they're very strict with letting kids of certain height on these smaller rides. Most of my kids are all too tall for this little train ride here. So just our youngest is riding it by herself. Then there are some rides that older, taller kids, adults can ride, but they have to ride with a child of a certain height. I can't remember what the exact window of height that they were requiring, but let's just say my youngest 
fit that requirement. She was right in the middle of that whole space there. You know how usually you have to line up to something. She was right in the middle and we would get in line for a ride and not really understand what the rules were until we got up there and the person operating the ride would say, no, only one tall person could ride with her and the rest of us just couldn't ride at all, which I thought was strange because it's like we're all a family, we're all together, all four of my kids being all siblings, they all wanted to go ride something together. Only one of them could ride with her is really the rules there. So it made it difficult. It made it difficult for us to all do something as a family. Now, if you're going there with all small kids, then you'd probably be fine. Or if you're going there with all big kids, it would be fine. But the fact that they were very strict with this split us up and we weren't able to all ride. Now there was this roller coaster there that honestly I thought was great for all ages, but they said if we wanted to ride it, we each have to take turns riding with her. So this little roller coaster here, we found out you, in order to ride it, you have to ride it with a child of a certain height. And our youngest is the only one who can ride it with someone or if we wanted to ride it, we had to have her ride it with us. I gotta say, my youngest, the first time she rode it, she was a little freaked out. She didn't really want to keep riding it, but the kids begged her to continue riding, so they all got a churn. It worked out fine, but really, does that have to be a rule? I did think it was a weight thing with the ride, and I thought, can't we just all split up into different carts or something? But no, it was a rule that you had to ride with that certain height in order to ride it at all. So you got rides, you have to ride with that certain height and rides, you just can't ride it all cause you're just too tall. Another one that just the little one gets to ride alone. That really made for a difficult time for us as far as rides go. I mean, it worked out okay. We split up and a few of the operators of the rides did actually let my older kids on. If they would go sit with a stranger, some kid they didn't even know, just to say they were riding with someone. I don't know. It just depends on who's operating the ride, I guess. All right, so that covers the negative part of it with the rides. I mean, we did have fun on the rides we were able to go on. We all really enjoyed the Ferris wheel. That's a classic. There were a lot of swing type rides that all six of us were able to ride together and we all enjoyed. We definitely were able to do a lot in the day we were there. And not to mention, it wasn't very crowded when we went. That's another thing too. You know, the park is not as expensive and it's not as crowded as Disney. We also went on a Thursday in June. That might've been a slow day. So I will definitely put that as a positive that we didn't have to wait in a lot of lines. That's never fun to do on a warm summer day when you are with your family having to wait in long lines. Now we were pretty much able to walk right on most of the rides. I believe the longest ride we waited in line for was maybe 30 minutes for a roller coaster. That's nothing, right? Compared to the Disney parks. A little bit of a positive for that, but a negative in general with the lack of rides we can all do as a family. And one more thing I will say about the rides is there was a lot of rides that weren't open. And honestly, I don't know the reason why they weren't open that day. I'm thinking because it was an off day, you know, being a weekday in June, a slower day for them, maybe they just decided they didn't need to open up all the rides. So I was disappointed because the big wooden roller coaster, which is usually gonna be my favorite ride at an amusement park like that, that ride was closed. They had no reason of why it wasn't open. We're assuming they were doing maintenance on it. There was also a water ride that was closed for no reason. It was a hot day. It would have been a perfect day to do a ride where we all got soaking wet. You know, they will close rides without giving explanation. I'm sure if I would have inquired about it, I would have known why they were closed. I know that all amusement parks will close rides on various days to do work on it or whatever. All right, now I wanna get into food. I was not very impressed with the selection of food there. Now they do have a lot of food selections, but 
I just didn't find that it was the best selection. And I was also really disappointed to find that they didn't have like a good ice cream place there. I just would assume a place like that would have had a fun ice cream parlor or, you know, some sort of stand that had a whole lot of different ice cream options. I am really big into a coffee freeze, a frappuccino type of drink in the middle of the day. They might have had it somewhere and I just didn't find it, but I looked pretty hard. The fact that they didn't have that option, you know, even like a coffee bar there would have been great, you know, to get an espresso, to get a cappuccino latte, whatever. We live in a coffee world, right? You need to have a good coffee bar and a good ice cream bar. The fact that they didn't have that as an option for food was pretty disappointing. We were there on a pretty warm day and we would have loved to have had an afternoon ice cream break. They did, however, have snow cones and they had that dip and dot, which people think is the same as ice cream, but honestly, I do not think that is the same as having good old fashioned ice cream or even frozen yogurt, soft serve, whatever. But that is all as far as cold options. Of course, you can get cold beverages, they even sell alcohol in the park. So, you know, you can definitely get cold drinks, but snow cones and dip and dots was the only option we had to give our kids a cold treat in the afternoon. I'm not saying they complained though. They absolutely loved getting snow cones is what we ended up doing that day. This is just my own preference. And you know, I might get a lot of dislikes for this video. That is totally fine. I understand a lot of people don't share the same likes as I do, don't share the same interest in types of food or anything that I'm sharing in this video. It's totally fine, I get it. Put in the comments what you think would be good for an amusement park. Let me just wrap it up here because there's just a few other things I wanted to mention. The park itself, when I first walked in, I was really excited because it almost had a little bit of a Disney feel to it. It had a really fun main street with, you know, the buildings just reminded me a little bit of Main Street USA at Disneyland. So of course, starting off walking into the park, I was really excited about the whole atmosphere of the park. Well, I was disappointed with that once we got in there, but even though they have that cute stretch there of the shops and the storefronts and everything, it was missing music. It really needed some music in the background. When we walked throughout the whole park, I really wanted there to be some sort of music in the background. I don't know, maybe I've just been to Disneyland too many times and I'm just used to that, but it gives such a fun ambiance when you get some sort of music in the background. There's really no theme to Elitch's. They don't have characters walking around. They might have back in the day, I don't know, but they don't have that now. So that whole not having a theme, part of the theme park was kind of missed. You know, this theme park is more about rides kids can go on, teenagers can go on, adults can go on. It's, I guess, a step up from going to the carnival. But it is established theme park. It does have a lot of trees there. So, you know, plenty of shade. It is by the water. You know, they have a pond there. It's got a little bit more than your traveling carnival. Don't get me wrong. That was probably not a good comparison. But like I said, I really did enjoy that whole drip there. It was very cute. Love that look. Just would have been nice if they had some music playing when you walk through. Really, that would have made the atmosphere a lot more inviting, at least for me. And going back to the whole ice cream thing, not that I want to go back to it. They had one shop there on that little strip that I thought was an ice cream place. We walk in to go just check it out. It turns out it is not ice cream. It looks like an ice cream place, but it is cookie dough. Cookie dough? Cookie dough? Who wants to eat a bowl of cookie dough on a hot summer day? Elitch Gardens peak season is summer. It's really not open during the cold months. It is going to be a place people go to on hot summer days. Who wants to get a bowl of cookie dough? I do not. I want ice cream. The fact that that place served cookie dough really I thought was bizarre. I don't know. I realize a lot of people out there love eating cookie dough. I mean, I like it now and then at home when I'm maybe making cookies to have a bite or two, but I don't want to get a bowl of it and certainly not on a hot day. That was just a thought I had when I was there that they could have used that cute little shop there for a fun ice cream place. Sorry, I did not mean to go back to the whole ice cream thing. 
I just like ice cream, especially in the summer. That is for the most part, the things I wanted to mention when it came to what I thought of Elidge Gardens. But as far as positive things go, which I didn't really mention a lot, I did say early on that it's not as expensive. It's not as crowded. It's still a fun place with cute little buildings and some parts of the park. My kids had a blast. We all had a fun time as a family. It is something to do in Denver. And you know, if you're just visiting for a short period of time and you love roller coasters, definitely go and visit. We just couldn't do all the thrill rides because we had a little one. And honestly, I'm getting a little too old for a lot of those rides too. In fact, in the video I did when we went there, I went on about how I am never gonna go on that one particular ride and probably a lot of those rides because I just can't handle being thrown around, going upside down a lot. I'm never riding that ride again in my life. I don't know, was I trying to prove that I still had some youth left in me or something? No, my kids love it. My husband can somewhat take it still, but I just get too nauseous, so it's not really for me. It might just be a park that is designed for, you know, you to take your little ones to and just do the kitty land or just take your teenagers to, or even just 20 year olds wanting to go out and have fun together. It definitely has some things to offer, but you know, it's not perfect. That's really what I wanted to emphasize today. Anyhow, if you got anything out of this video, found it helpful or enjoyed, please hit the like button. Thank you so much for watching and may you have a beautiful day.